little off my mind, yo. Barefoot and a little bit of sunshine. Radio and a little bit of sublime. Bass lines are pumping steady. From a stereo, we're back on my Chevy. Good times, no more heavy. My crew, are you ready? And we're gonna call my friends, your friends, and their friends. And we all get together. motion on a boat in the middle of the ocean sunshine and a little bit of lotion sunset and everything feels golden my homies pour me a potion good music got me wide open tell the dj they're getting a promotion for making this party all right and we're gonna call my friends your friends and their friends and we all get Welcome, welcome, everybody. Um, I saw some people were in Raleigh. I hear you guys had snow. I'm in Northern California, right outside San Francisco. And let's just say the fan is on. I had the reggae going, and I'm in a sleeveless top. Happy January, everyone. My name is Karen, and I'm going to be your host for today. I'm very excited to be here. I will say that this was a last-minute change because of illness. So I am your host. Some of my photos are beautifully cropped, like I wanted them to be. But just so we can do, you know, we're gonna we're gonna have a great time anyway. So make sure you got something to drink. I have a um, Earl Grey decaf Earl Grey with a little bit of foam milk, which I think they call London Fog. I got my pins. I personally enjoy Tombos, but they're kind of expensive, and so I ordered the other day. Um, a set called Sippa off of Amazon. And I got a lot of colors for about $11. And so far they're not bleeding through and I do like that. And then of course, make sure you have your journal with you today. So it looks like we have some new people here with us today and I'm very excited about that. Um, so everybody knows uh, you don't have to worry about muting yourself. This is a webinar. You're not going to come on camera. You know, if you have a face mask on right now, we're not going to see it. If your dog's barking, we're not going to hear it. Now, if my chihuahuas bark, you will hear it, and I apologize. Um, so there you go. So um, though, how many of you were here for the weekly setup last week? Oh, Lori, I love that you have a face mask on. I kind of thought about it, honestly. Was anyone here? Okay, KK, you were. So some of you were here. So Jen Gay did it, and I was actually um, in the audience like you guys are, and she did an activity, and I kind of wanted to see how it went for everybody, and those of you who were not there, I'm going to go through the activity with you, and you can try it for this week. So ultimately, she gave us some emotions, and I'm going to read them out for you. 
their joy, happy, hope, gratitude, inspiration, awe, interest, amusement, pride, serenity, and love. And then she had us define what it was that we, what they were. And then you were to put it into your one thing. And this is my last week's. And I chose the word, you probably can't see it, but I chose the word serenity up there. And I kept the same word for the whole week. And you were supposed to kind of just touch base and see how it was, um, how you felt. And research says that even if we do this just one week, that it can give us a happiness boost for up to six months. So I was curious, did anyone feel that they got a benefit from that? Um, hopefully Katie, our beautiful stage manager, will be able to throw those words in there for you. There she is. She's already on it. She's so good. Yeah, I really felt that I had a very stressful week last week and I just kept thinking serenity, serenity, serenity. And I did think it did help a little bit. I mean, it was a more stressful week than usual. Um, so I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself before we kind of go in there. Um, and my name is Karen. I've been a facilitator since the April of last year and I found Silk and Saunders February of, was it 2000? Is that when the pandemic hit? So it was literally one month before the pandemic hit. And I really was struggling. My husband, I'm in the Bay Area right outside San Francisco where we originated Silk and Saunders, not me, but that's where Silk and Saunders home is. And I was really searching for something. And I think I was being a little codependent, honestly. My mental health, he was busy all the time. And I really couldn't figure out what it was that I need to be doing outside of exercise and my job and cooking. And so I had a friend recommend this journal and it was an absolute lifesaver for me in a lot of aspects. The Wheel of Life, if you knew, you may not have gotten that yet. Big impact. Um, the activity that we're not focusing on tonight, but the icky guy really um, helped me focus in. And I literally made a career change based on icky guy, that habit tracker. And I just so um, love this journal. And I want to be very transparent. I have been sick. If you've been with me for a bit, I, oh, Marissa, my birthday was yesterday. I have been sick since New Year's Eve. I did, a, uh, did the monthly setup New Year's Eve. And I'm not going to lie. I did not do a good job on my habit trackers. Like I set them up and they're empty. Guess what, guys? Things are happening. And I know that there's a lot of you who have been sick as well. Our family members have been sick, like Sarah was going to host tonight. So I just want to give you permission to take wherever you are, if you're brand new, if you struggle this month with illness or other things that are happening, um, you know, pets going over that rainbow bridge that I saw, all of those things. I want to give yourself permission because guess what? This is empty for me. But these journaling pages are not. And I still had a huge aha for myself this month. And it was about my birthday. And it was about the fact that I should not be relying on my husband to do the perfect thing. Tell him what I want. And if it's something that I know that's going to take too much pressure for him, do it yourself. So I ordered my own birthday cake. I got some birthday cake truffles and I ordered a cheese tasting for myself and told them exactly what it was that I wanted. And that is totally huge for me. Because remember, the reason I started this was codependent. And I know I'm talking a lot, but ultimately what I want to say is you don't have to fill out everything in this journal for it to work. So without further ado, it looks like most of you are already set to everyone. And just being here, you're going to be a part of that raffle. So don't worry about that. And unless this is your first social, you know that we are focusing on imagination this month. So if you're like me, 
you may not be the most imaginative. So I came up with some ideas of things that you could do that can use the imagination, that can benefit you, that don't feel like a huge stretch. Now, you may be a person who's super creative and this may be like, oh yeah, this is like just what I do. But for those of you who are a little more analytic like me, this is some ideas for you. Think of a problem, any problem. Then go for a walk outside and let your attention just wander to anything that seems interesting. Then ask yourself, how is my problem like this thing I'm noticing? This is how actually George the Minstrel came up with Velcro. He needed to think of a fastener astronauts could use for their heavy gloves. So he went for a walk and noticed that the burr stuck to his pants. And bingo, modified burr spines became Velcro. And he became rich. So that's awesome, right? So a lot of times those showers, those walks that we're feeling like we're not being productive and we just let our mind go may actually be what exactly that we need. Now, while you're driving or walking or cooking, which for some of us, that is our meditation. Some of us don't calm our minds very easily. And so that may be how it is that you're doing it. So I want you to imagine that you are with your girlfriends, your friends, maybe their voice. I have some really great guy friends too. So you're with your best friends. And what story might you tell right now to entertain or connect with your peeps? By imagining yourself as a storyteller, you fire up the right side of your brain and you open up your creativity. That's something that seems doable to me, right? Like, I'm like, oh yeah, if I was going to be there with my friends, I would talk about how I was trying to go get my CAT scan on and I showed up seven days early. And so I would make a joke of it and be able to go through it. What about a favorite recipe and modify it? So it might be something for food sensitivities. It might be because you're vegan or you're gluten-free and just taking an existing recipe and getting creative. And I saw a lot of you guys did this in the cooking social that maybe pomegranate seeds weren't available to you. So you use cranberries or feta wasn't your favorite. So you threw in goat cheese. That absolutely is using your imagination. I'm a big food person. So there you go. So Samantha, you're doing this all the time, right? Because there's a lot that you can't eat. So when you're in the kitchen, bring home one food item a week that you've never eaten before, and then throw into the internet what it is and use something with it. Now, I literally find that my best meals come up when I look in my refrigerator and find three things and I throw those three random things into Google and it always ends up coming up with like the most beautiful arrangement. So like sweet potatoes and maybe bok choy and black beans, see what it is that I can come up with. Yeah. It's like my own little iron chef at home. A lot of, plus I'm eating healthy and I'm going to save the money. So it's like a win-win, right? Or my final example is that you are stuck in traffic. And maybe if you're a commuter, like in New York or something along those lines that you're just stuck because that happens a lot too. And I want you to think about yourself as a stand-up comedian and how you would describe this experience in a funny way. Because when we use humor, it really does skyrocket our creativity. So those are just some examples that I thought might be fun for those of us who are a little limited in our creativity to be able to kind of keep that moving. So without further ado, we're going to head into our agenda. We have an imagination activity. We have our weekly setup, and then we're going to close it out. So that's awesome. Now, before I introduce this activity, I'm going to say it's so much fun, but I'm also going to say it wasn't the easiest thing for me to do. And that actually I ended up going and doing a little Googling. So I don't want you to be like, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So I'll explain it, but it's not cheating for you to get onto the internet to look. So here we go. So our, it looks like I grabbed the wrong slide, got indulgence, or maybe it was supposed to be imagination. I don't know. Okay, so our imagination activity is I want you to pretend that you are the star of a movie. And I want you to come up with five titles 
of what that movie might describe for you. So in a blank page, in your journal, a note page, or if you're like me and literally running out of um, room, I don't know if you've noticed, but this week, page 57 has a little um, note section in here. That'll be plenty of space for you to do this. You can see I have a daily ritual in there. So I'm going to explain my thought process on this. There's no right or wrong way to do it. If you're creative, great. So movie of my life, Pilates instructor. So I got on and looked at movie titles. So the Pilates instructor inspired by the Godfather. Big feelings inspired by the title Big Fish. Three, coming to New Zealand, because I lived and moved to New Zealand, not currently, but I did, being inspired by coming to America. Number four, overanalyzing everything, inspired by analyze this. And then five, worst in show versus the dog show, best in show. And that's just a little side humor for me because my dogs are definitely the biggest mutts and I love them to death. So it's just a play because they're not full red. So I'm going to turn my camera off. I'm going to put on a couple of songs. I want you to come up with one or up to five or, hey, you know, maybe you want to be really creative and this is just right up your alley and you do 10. But I want you to share in the chat. Okay. And if you're like, I literally Googled movie titles. So don't feel like it's cheating if you need a little inspiration, but also keep your eye on that chat because other people are going to have great ideas in the chat as well. Okay. All right, friends, I'm going to go off camera and turn some music on.
Oh my gosh, you guys are amazing. I'm sitting here trying not to laugh because I am just dying. So not only are our Sonder family super compassionate and think about others besides themselves, which I see, but you guys are hilarious as well. I'm trying to scroll through. I mean, there's so many 10 things I hate about New York. Um, forward to the future, save the last donut, home alone again. Why good women always win. Ooh, I like that. Um, flying on the freeway in my Ford freestyle of love. Oh my gosh, these are amazing. And back to the doctor. Yeah, I'm doing you on that one. Um, school of jazz, dude, where's my Zoom login? Loose marbles. Oh my gosh, you guys are amazing. These are so good. Here and queer, a lot. So, so good. Uh, the 50 year old born again virgin. Um, I think there was another one of love during COVID. These are so amazing. Oh, uh, these are, oh, I just love it. These are fantastic. You guys are so much better at this than I am in such the perfect way. Okay, so we're gonna actually move on because we got a lot to do tonight, actually. And we're gonna go on to that rosebud thorn. And I think the rosebud thorn that you're gonna wanna be filling out if you have not already filled out is on page 50. Yes, 50. That's the one for last week, or you can go the one for this week. So if you are brand new with Silk and Saunders, this is a prompt we absolutely love. And I was familiar with this prompt beforehand. I actually used it when I was um, a camp director. It was a way for the kids to reflect at the end of the day. So it's right at the dinner table um, with kids as well as reflecting with it without yourself. So the rose is something that's good. The bud is something that has potential and the thorn is just what it sounds like, something that's not necessarily amazing. So I am going to just give you an example. Those of you who may not have done this before. So rose, my rose this week is that I finally set some boundaries with work. It's not something that's easy for me. Um, my bud is the response was actually good and they apologized and we're going to be able to keep moving forward in the direction we need to for the project we need to. And then my thorn is that I'm still waiting on so much blood work results and a CAT scan to be able to come in because like I said, I've been sick, sick since New Year's Eve. Okay, without further ado, you can do this on a blank sheet of paper. You can do this on the rosebud thorn on the back of last week or even at the start of this week or just any place in there. So you can turn a song on, turn it off, or you can do one quick song. Feel free, whatever you feel comfortable sharing, share it in the chat. It might be your rose. It might be your bud. It might be all three. Totally up to you. This is a safe place and there is no judgment. Okay.
All right, beautiful people. Um, that was a fast moving chat. Thank you all for being vulnerable. And I know that the chat is hard to keep up with and we really are trying to come up with a solution. We are aware that sometimes when there, we have over 200 people here tonight. So definitely is um, a little hard. So some of these were related to help. Um, that's always hard. It seems like we do have some birthdays, including mine, which is good. Um, someone bought themselves flowers. A dog is responding to chemo. That one's huge for me. So there's a lot of those things that are out there. I want to make sure we have plenty of time to be able to go through the weekly setup. So we're going to go ahead and move forward. Okay, so... We are going to be turning to our weekly planner, and if you attended last week, you might see some of your own work up on my screen. This is what I meant by it not being beautiful. I was at one this afternoon trying to put this together. So you can see, look, 1248 right then and there. So we are looking at those pages 53 through 54. Let me tell you how we're going to do this. I'm going to go through examples of page 53, and then I'm going to give you time to work on it. We're going to go through all the sections, and then we'll do the same thing with page 54. So don't feel like you have to try to keep up with it. We're going to give you time. So the very first one is this week, I want to feel. Now, this one is definitely probably the easiest to fill out, but I, I would love to say, Nona, that these were my pages. They are not my pages. They're other people's pages. Just copying. So you can, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You can use one word, you can use multiple words, you could use a phrase. All of these are absolutely okay to do. Now, if you're like me and you're like, I want to feel happy, but that doesn't seem quite right, we're going to pull out that feelings wheel. So if you are a new member, you may have gotten a new um, member pamphlet that had this inside. Um, love this. So ultimately what you do is you look in the middle and ultimately there are six emotions, anger, fear, sadness, love, surprise, and joy. And then you work your way from the inside and move out. So let's say happy or joy doesn't feel quite right for me. I could go in and I could look enthralled, elation, enthusiastic, optimistic, proud, cheerful, happy, content. And I'm like, oh, one of those works really well for me. But what if it doesn't? Then I can go out to the next one and be like, oh, jubilation or euphoric sound more like what it is I'm wanting. So this is the one time I'm going to give you just a moment to be able to write it down because this is not going to be up again. So if you are needing this, pick your emotion, write it down. Feel free to share that emotion in the chat. Amber is feeling proud. Amber, it's good to see you as always. Um, I like to be able to keep the feelings wheel in my journal using a magnetic bookmark. So definitely um, triumphant, productive, accomplished, courageous and present. So many positive vibes only yes. <laughs> Open, happier, more calm, more focused, accomplished, speechless, joyously productive like that, Mar, delighted, reliable, proceed. Love that one. So good. Focused. Okay. So go ahead and write it down and we're going to keep on moving. Now from this point forward, I will give you time. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, at the weekly to do, this is why I'm getting accounts to get right. So, deep breath. Thank you, Jeanette and Isabella. This is someone's beautiful example on the right of how they were looking at their beautiful to dos. This is literally one from last week's social. So these can be a laundry list of things you need to do. It might be something of work. And you guys are the best. I love you guys so much. Um, it might be something related to work. It might be something related to home. It might be appointments that you need to make. Whatever it is that works for you. Now, if you keep your to-do somewhere else, feel free to repurpose this page. Mm. Okay. So. 
you can use this as is or repurpose. And I'm going to give you some repurposing ideas as we go through as well. The next section. <laughs> is weekly major goals. Oh, it moved on my screen, but not yours. There we go. So when I look at my goals, the thing that... <laughs> Excuse me, one second. Getting my husband to bring me some water. Okay, so the biggest question most people have with this is what's the difference between the goals and the habits and such? So, this is how it is that I look at it. Doesn't mean it's the right way, it's just one way to look at it. When I write these goals, I do go back and look at my intentions for the month and my habits. So, I go in and I look saying that my intention, my spiritual health was to meditate, walk, and hike in nature. Well, the walking and hiking in nature is not really happening, but I can definitely do the meditation. So that goal may be something along the lines as to do that three times, maybe. Um, you might look at your habits and maybe there's a habit that is not going particularly awesome for you right now that you're having a hard time keeping up with. So maybe the goal is to fill out that habit tracker two times with that. So now those of you who need a little more pizzazz, glitter, something along those lines, um, I happen to be one of those people. You can actually make a bingo board out for your goals. And if you were someone who is a washi tape sticker person and from what I saw of someone's movie title, they are definitely at least one of you out there. You can use those to be able to mark it off. So that's one way that just makes it a little more fun and maybe a little less like I have to do this because I saw someone was posting in Sonic Club today. It's like, uh, it feels like a chore instead of something fun. So definitely, definitely a way to be able to look at it. And I saw we have some teachers in here and we all know teachers love stickers and sticker charts. So that's one way to kind of look at those goals. Now, the next section is that habit and activity. I've shared this before and I absolutely love it. Is that when we're looking at our to-do list, habit, habit or activity, I look at my three Ds, delete, get rid of the tasks that aren't necessary, delegate, what can you push off to someone else? Maybe it's a kid, maybe it's a husband, maybe it's ordering um, food box so you don't have to go grocery shopping or maybe getting food delivery, those types of things. And then whatever is left, we delight in it and we choose to delight in it. And that's just kind of a mindset thing. Now, I got some tips that I thought were really awesome is that sometimes it seems a little overwhelming for the to-do list and such. And it looks like I copy and paste on the wrong page. So I apologize for this. So kind of think about this when you are looking at your to-dos is to put a sticky note on it. That way when you need to look at it, you can, but you don't feel overwhelmed. I don't know what you put in this. I just got like a little alka seltzer in my mouth. Maybe it's one of my water drops. That must be what it is. Um, so another way you can look at it is looking at work, school, personal. So trying to make the gamut for all. Though I know some of you guys have planners that you use specifically for work, and this is just your personal. So you get to use this journal however it makes sense to you. Now I'm going to show you some different examples of what it is my pages have evaluated and looked like in the past. So over here on my left was my very first one. And I was looking at the to-do or just things I need to do before we moved into our new house. You can see it was professional goals on the right. 
And then I was trying to establish a routine in the mornings on the left. I'm still trying to establish that routine. So if you're like me, you know, we're human. We're not machines. It's a work in progress. I'm a work in progress. The second one, it was more like to do's, more like planning, more professional related this week. And it just kind of ebbs and flows to know how it is. Still working on that morning ritual, but I was able to add something on because I was doing really good at that point. And my goals were related to the move, work, and then financial as well. So there's all these different ways to kind of look at it. Then you can see over on the left, this is one me and Katie brainstormed together, is that I decided that I wanted my to do's to be fun and fall related. This must have been in September. So, oh, Constance, yes, hamstring stretch. My, my handwriting is not the best, which is funny for someone who's a primary school teacher. So I put things that were fun there, still looking at those morning rituals. And then over on the right, the goals were more fun. And sometimes mine are purely fun and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, the next week was kind of fun as well. It was getting ready for Halloween, getting decorations and things that I wanted to be able to deal with. You can see goal number two was deal with the computer. Poured water all over it. Somehow it still survived. And that, you know, Saturday hike. So all of these different things you can there's no right or wrong way. And you just use it the way it works for you. Uh, this was Halloween month. So I made a movie list. Um, goals were to cover extra classes. I was about to go on a road trip. So you can see how it kind of looks a little bit different on the right. I was planning out what I needed to do for the road trip. Um, goals were totally related to me and my profession. And you can see that I changed my morning routine to a night routine to see if that worked better for me. It didn't. I'm still working on it. And then on the left is someone's beautiful page from last week. If this was yours, please claim it in the chat. Uh, so that's what theirs looked like. So it looks like theirs is, you know, fine balance. So it's a little more loft, not lofty, like philosophical type goals versus something very specific. And then over on my right was learn the new payroll, email staff, so it was very work-related. And then over on the right was definitely more fun. And so, whoops, went, went too far. I'm going to play a couple of songs. Actually, actually going to play one long song. I'm going to let you guys get to work and finish that page up on your own.
please feel free to keep writing as I'm sharing. Um, I really love the idea of putting on the to-do list a random act of kindness. Some of you must be East Coast if you're going to Dunkin' Donuts or her to come by in the Bay Area. So some of these are dealing with meditation. And one of our founder, Mayha's favorite book was actually mentioned, Atomic Habits. I'd like to say that I got into it, but I didn't. But looking at those habits, stacking, brushing the teeth when you jade roll, putting them together or putting those vitamins right by the coffee pot. If that's where you're going first thing in the morning, all of those specific things. Carolyn says she found it helpful to look back at her monthly intentions when thinking about the habits and goals, not making progress. But then I look back at my intention and realize, I, oh, I bet you might have made a lot of those intentions. After all, I love that. So good. Okay. Because we don't have a ton of time left, I'm going to start moving through the next section. But feel free to keep sharing, keep writing, no big deal. Meal plan is next. So some people do not love the meal plan. They're not planners out. It doesn't fit for them. Some other ideas, a dream log, affirmations, quotes, make a plan for maybe your study plan versus your meal plan or your study plan and your workout plan. Um, how they feel about what it is that they ate, maybe one salad, two fruit, three water, listing meditations or the reflection on the meditations. And then I love this one because I have a senior dog as well, is that um, animal pill care and tracking. Now, the example on the left is not mine, but they looked at spiritual, physical, mental health and intellectual health. health. And I thought that that was really smart. Um, for me, I do write down, like, I'm going to say purple carrot. I won't put the actual meal name down, but knowing that those are the nice, I'm going to use them because, you know, when you order those foods, some vegetables hold up better than longer. So I don't want to attach myself to that. I put the name of my smoothies, those types of things. Um, so definitely those are ways to be able to kind of look at it mind body health plan some people use this on how they want to feel um workout is definitely one that's very commonly used here or how many steps that they're doing constants i love purple care i'm going to cook one right after this um self-care wins i thought that that was really smart that way you're like oh well i don't have time for a face mask but in that app i can confirm that affirmation so you could write that down um, some people like alliteration, like meditation Monday, music Monday, maintenance Monday, kind of helps you remember what I felt good about today. Rochelle, nice. I like it. Reading Trevor, Samantha, we have a lot of readers here for sure. Um, cleaning schedules is another thing that I've seen a lot of people who do as well. Um, over on the right, someone wrote their affirmations. Is Ashlyn with us this evening? So Jasmine, that's a really good point. So I, someone mentioned uh, that you could subscribe to a site where it sends you an email about like random holidays for the week. Women's Day Magazine does that too. And I love a good holiday. It's because I was an early childhood major and theme gets me going. So I looked up for today, this next coming week. And if you're looking for a little spot or you're fun, like Monday is National Peanut Butter Day. So like, making your kid a peanut butter sandwich, or maybe that's a peanut butter shake for you, or maybe it's peanut butter in your smoothie. Just, you know, a little whimsy. Um, Tuesday is opposite day, but it's also Irish coffee day, so I include both. Wednesday is Australia day, so maybe you have a favorite Australian author or actor, and you want to, like, do something about that. You know, this is just whimsy, just a different idea of way to do it. Thursday's Nash, um, National Geographic Day. Maybe you want to watch a show on Netflix, or maybe you were just digging some chocolate cake and it's been a long week and you're going to indulge in that. Friday, fun at work, and it's also Lego Day. And I'm just going to show you really fast. My dog walker gave me the cutest Christmas present. This is Legos, guys. Isn't that awesome? So, you know, Legos aren't just for kids anymore. Oh, Catherine's so good. Katie's already put it in there. So, yeah. So, I mean, my husband really enjoyed it. It was almost like a meditation for him. So, Boba Fett day. That's um, Star Wars, right? I think. Okay, moving on. 
Legos at work, yes, Sue, I can do this, <laughs> definitely. Um, shopping list. You can use this just as is. Someone's over here, they're using that GLAD acronym that everyone loves so much, which is gratitude. Uh, I'm trying to read it. Learned, organized, and designed. Someone throw it in the chat if that's not what it is. Oh, it's yours, Amber. Yay. Actually, someone here and I use their page. Um, maybe you cannot stand ripping out a page from your journal and that just is like, whoa. Um, so you can take a photo of it. I like to take a photo of my shopping list on my phone and I take it with me to the grocery store. Um, you can rip out the page and put it on the fridge, though that may be sacrilege for some of you. Katie's so good. Learn, accomplish, delight. Awesome. Those are those flats. Gratitude, learned, accomplishment, delight. Yeah, Samantha, write your appointments for the week there. That's a great way to be able to keep up with it. Um, I've used it for like clothing that I want to buy, but I'm trying to save money. So I have it, but I am not buying it right out. I've used it as a packing list. Someone at one of the social says they put what's in their fridge or what they have available for easy meals. Um, Someone else talked about they put their subscriptions and the bills that are coming out of their account on the shopping list. Um, Katie's saying that's her watch list right now. And then the last section in this section is what I'm loving. So there you go. So here's some examples here that you can see. I think I put the wrong ones. You can see I was doing this fast. I apologize. Um, yeah. So there you go. Wrong pages. So I'm going to put some time, some music on. I'm going to give you a little opportunity to work and um, share what it is you're using in that planner. And sorry about the examples. And anybody who loved punk in the 80s may actually know who this band is.
I'm glad you enjoyed that song. I was, it was kind of a risk putting it on there. I'm not going to lie, but you know, there's always a little something for everybody. So there's no right or wrong way to approach this journal. You make it your own. It's absolutely your planner. And don't forget how I started this today. I haven't kept track of one habit or one mood for the entire month. But did I still have some big ahas? Yeah, absolutely. So use the pages that work for you and don't hang up on the fact that you need to fill out every single page. If you're a person who's a completist, I get it. It's okay to do that for sure, but it's not the only way to do it. Oh, Barbara's saying that she used it to track her audible listens. That's a really good idea because I feel like me, sometimes you may not finish a book that you've actually tried. Uh, so without further ado, I want to say thank you so much for your patience today with things being not quite perfect with a little bit of coughing in a couple of pages not in the right place. And we are all wishing um, Sarah to be feeling better absolutely soon as much as possible. She's a special ed teacher. She got back to those kids and she has everyone in her family sick, including her little boy. So you know that that's rough times. So I do want to be able to say that if you're not on the app, we definitely love seeing all your awesome things that you like to do. If you aren't sure how to use the QR code, open up the camera, hover it over the QR code. It will pick up the link. You click it, it will download it. You do not have to use it. It is something that you can or do not have to use. It does elevate it, but the journal is fantastic stand alone too. And then the final thing is that we do look at these comments. We get them every Monday. We look at them. And if you hated the dead milkman and the surfing cow, I will see it and I will know that I should never use it again. No, I'm just kidding. But you know what I mean? We do look at it and that we definitely do use it to be able to create new socials and make these to fit your needs as well as it is that's possible. And we had such a really fun brainstorm session on Friday on some really new interesting events that may be coming up in the new future, including one that I think if I'm correct, Katie is gonna be hosting for Valentine's Day. Am I right on that, Katie? So definitely super awesome. Um, I'm gonna put some music on and um, if you have any questions, we'll stick around for the duration of the song questions, thoughts, and, you know, it doesn't have to be related specifically to this social. If there are things that you are wanting, put it in that survey. Awesome, guys. Have a great rest of your night. I'm going to turn my screen off, and I'm going to put us out with a little Sunday best. the challenge all you gotta do is leave it better than you found it it's gonna get difficult to stand but hold your balance i just say whatever cause there is no way you're around everyone falls down sometimes but you just gotta know it'll all be fine it's okay uh -huh. it's okay up and nothing works you feel surrounded gotta give your feet some gravity to get you grounded keep your things inside your ears just like the waves and sound it and just say whatever cause there is no way you're grounded everyone falls down sometimes but you just gotta know it'll all be fine it's okay uh -huh. it's 
Sunday best, hey, feeling good, like I should, winning dog, walk around the neighborhood, 